Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on uh, factoring trinomials. And we're starting with sort of the, um, the simpler trinomials. So we end up with a trinomial, which is basically this thing, which is a polynomial, but it has three parts. So we're calling it trinomial. We end up multiplying these two terms together. So x times x is going to give us the x squared. The 3 times the x here will give us the 3x. The x times the 7 will give us the 7x. And the 3 times the 7 will give us the 21. And then we end up with this, the x squared plus 10x plus 21, and there's our trinomial. And when you're factoring trinomials, what you're trying to do is get back to the two pieces that multiplied together to give you this. So my approach to factoring trinomials, and it's, it's, um, <coughs> there's two approaches generally. One is called the trial and error method, which is the method that I'm going to show you. <coughs> and it actually works really well. So we have this, this uh, trinomial and we want to factor it. So the first thing I do is I just start with my brackets because I know I'm going to end up with my brackets anyway. Then I ask myself, what needs to be here? What numbers need to be here in order to give me x squared? Because I know that that happens when these two are multiplied together. So we end up having to have x here and x here in order to get x squared. And then I ask myself, what numbers here, what times what gives me 21? Well, I know that that is 7 and 3, and that's really the only thing that will give me 21. So I know that a 7 and a 3 here have got to be multiplied together to give me the 21. It doesn't really matter which, at this point it doesn't matter where I put the 7 or the 3, as long as they're there. Now, the next thing I deal with is the sign. And it's always the sign here that I deal with. So I ask myself, what's the sign in front of the 21? And that tells you what the signs have to be here. If we have a positive in front of the 21, that tells you that these signs are either both positive or both negative. And at that point, we look to this. And sometimes, and this question is a little bit simpler, but sometimes it's really hard to figure out. So if you're not sure, you just guess. But we can say for sure that there has to be a plus here and a plus here. And walking through this more than once and reminding yourself of what times what gives you what parts here helps you to be able to work through this. So that's basically the trial and error method of factoring trinomials. So now we're going to walk through another question. So here we have x squared plus 9x plus 20. So at this point, I ask myself, what times what is going to give me a 20? So I know 10 times 2 will give me a 20. And I know 5 times 4 will give me a 20. Then I ask myself, which of those two combinations, either added or subtracted, will give me a 9? And it's the 5 and the 4. So then, I put down my two brackets, and then I ask myself, what's going to give me x squared here? So what in this position will give me x squared? And that would be an x and an x. And I've already decided that my 5 and 4 will be the numbers that I use because they add up to the 9. So at this point, it doesn't really matter where I put the 5 or the 4, they just have to be in one of these two positions, so let's put them there. Then I say, okay, I have a plus in front of the 20, 
So that means these two signs here are the same. They're either both positive or both negative. And I'm going to pick the positive because this is a positive, right? So I pick the positive. Now at this point, you should always check, especially when you're first starting with these equations, because it's easy to make a mistake. So let's just walk through it. So this times this, we have x squared, x times 4, we have plus 4x, 5 times x, we have plus 5x, and then 5 times 4, we end up with plus 20. So we have x squared plus 9x plus 20. Bingo. <coughs> and the more you walk through this, the easier that, that factoring becomes. In the beginning, I know people find it really frustrating because there's no uh, specific route that you follow. You just have to muck around a little bit, and you just need to be willing to do that. So let's try this one. So again, we start with two brackets. Ask myself, what is going to give me x squared? And it has to go here. It has to be x and x. And I also skip this step, but what times what gives me 27? Well, the only thing multiplied together that gives me 27 is 9 and 3. Then I ask myself, do those numbers add up to 6? Yes, they do. So then those are the numbers that I will use in these two places. So then I put my 9 here, and it doesn't have to go there, it could go there. Put my 9 here and put my 3 here. <coughs> so now I'm noticing that the sign in front of the 27 is a negative. So that tells me that the signs that are here, so the signs that multiply the 9 and the 3 together have got to be different signs. So there are a plus and a minus. So the decision is which goes where. At this point, you don't have to know. You can just say, well, I'm not sure. And so you could put it in the place that it doesn't work. So let's just do that. Let's say we think it goes here and the plus goes there. So then what we'll do is mul multiply through this. We're just going to do a check, okay? So x times x is x squared, and then we have this, which is plus 3x, and this, which is minus 9x, and this, which is minus 27. Now you can see by looking at it that we have x squared minus 6x minus 27. So you say, okay, my signs are in the wrong place. So then you change it. So x plus 9, x minus 3. And then just to make sure you're okay, you walk through the steps again. x times x is x squared. Yeah, I have to draw the arrows x times x, x times minus 3, so we have minus 3x, and 9 times x, so we have plus 9x, and then minus 27. These add up to x squared plus 6x minus 27. Bingo. All right, and again, the more you, the more you play around with this, the more, the more it starts to make sense. All right, now if you want, you can pause the video here and try these two questions on your own, and then restart the video, and I'll walk through the questions. Okay. So, again, we start with our brackets. Bracket, 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 bracket. We also ask ourselves, what times what is going to give me 28? So, we have a 14 and a 2. We have a 4 and a 7. Now, which of these two combinations is going to either added or subtracted give me an 11? And that would be the 4 and the 7. 
Okay. So I say, okay, so S squared, what goes here, has to be an S and an S. I've already made a decision that the two numbers I'm going to multiply together to give me 28 are 4 and 7. So I'll just put the 4 there and the 7 there. Now I have to make a decision about the sign. And so I always look to this first. I have a plus 28. So that tells me that those two signs are the same. I'm also noticing that I have a minus 11. So that tells me those two signs are probably negative. I'm not positive, but I'm thinking they're probably. Okay. So then I do this, and then I say, well, let's do a check just in case. So s times s is s squared, and s times minus 7, minus 7s, seven and then minus 4 times s is minus 4s, and then minus 4 times minus 7 is plus 28. So then we have s squared minus 11s plus 28, so we're good. Okay, last question. Now again, the first thing that you should be thinking about when you're factoring is whether or not there's a common factor. So if we look at this, we can see that there is a common factor. And that common factor is a 2. So that's the first thing we have to do is deal with that common factor. So we pull out the 2 and we're left with a squared minus 2a minus 30. Then what we do is we figure out what times what is going, oh that's not a 30, no wonder. I was thinking something was wrong there. That is a 15, which you can't read. So 2 times a squared minus 2a minus 15. Then again, we ask ourselves, what times what gives me 15? So 3 times 5. And do those numbers add or subtract to equal 2? Yes, they do. So those are the numbers we're going to use. So put our 2 out front and then have bracket, 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 bracket. In order to get the a squared here, we have to have an a here and an A here. In order to get the 15 here, we've already told ourselves it's going to be a 5 and a 3, so it doesn't matter where you put them. 5 and a 3. Now we also notice that we have a negative sign in front of the 15, so that tells you that these two signs are different. We also see that we have a minus 2A. So, and we know that when we multiply the 5 times the a and the 3 times the a, we add or subtract them, or we add them together essentially, all right? So I'm assuming because this is a minus 2, that the minus should go in front of the 5, and the plus should go here. Now also, it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to have them in the wrong place, because then you multiply it through and just see, oh, I made a mistake, I need to change it. So it's not the end of the world. So what we'll do is just walk through this and make sure we're right. So 2, we have a times a, which is a squared. a times minus 5, so minus 5a. 3 times a, so plus 3a. 3 times minus 5, which is minus 15. So we end up with 2a squared minus 2a minus 15. Okay, so we're good. So that tells you that this answer then is correct. All right, and there's factoring trinomials. And that was brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a good day. Take care of yourself.